Welcome to another edition of Florida Sportsman Action Spotter Podcast. I'm Captain Rick Riles. Well, I'll tell you what, it's springtime now. Everybody's in a good mood. Everybody's catching fish. Can't wait to get the word from the boys. Everything I hear about this year's Mahi Run all up and down the East Coast has been very, very good. I hope it holds up a while. I tell you, it's been a while since we've had a good season of Mahis. But we'll check in with all the boys. Got a couple of questions for them tonight. I want to know what they think the biggest threat to our fishery is over the next 10, 15 years. And I also want to know from some of the guys, what fish did they still dream about catching that they haven't caught yet? So it ought to be a fun trip. We're going to start our trip up in Northeast Florida and check in with Captain David Borries, find out what's happening there inshore and offshore, work our way down the East Coast, through the Keys, up the West Coast, and out the Panhandle. So, this week's Florida Sportsman Action Spotter is brought to you each and every week by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. By Shimano, bringing people and nature together. By Tournament Master Chum, always the best chum on earth, all right. By Nasara Paradise Rentals, your dream destination. By DOA Lures, the unfair advantage. By Young Boats, the finest in flat span offshore hybrids. And by the Castaway Hat Company, the hat that's helping save our seas. Let's get it rolling and check in with one Captain David Borries. We're going to start our journey around the state up in northeast Florida and get the inshore report from one Captain David Borries. David, how are you? Hey, I'm doing fine, Ricky. Hey, David, can I give you the offshore report before we do yours? Absolutely. Woo, I'm fi- curious to hear it. It is finally happening. We've uh, They are stacking the mahis out of Jacksonville and St. Augustine. Lots of fish, lots of big fish, a few wahoo to go with them, lots of blackfin tuna, and a sailfish or two. I tell you what, buddy, I I know I brought you a piece of mahi on Saturday. How was it? It was delicious. Had it last night with some uh, cheese grits. That'll work. That'll work. Mahi and grits will work. Tell me about the inshore fishing. I tell you, I haven't talked to you guys in a couple of weeks, and in these two weeks, the fishing has just gone off the scale as far as inshore goes. We're seeing fish that I've never seen here this early. Uh, mangrove snappers are here in good numbers and good sizes, Rick. I've never remember seeing them this size this early. So, uh, you know, usually we don't see them till you know what, usually around June. Yeah, and yeah, here it is, like July. June and July, right. And then, you know, here it is, you know, the end of April, they were here. And it's like, I mean, places that I fished overnight, you know, one day they weren't there. I go there the next day and I'm catching mangrove snap. Yeah. Uh, it was it was just an unbelievable. Plenty of ladyfish, jacks, big ladyfish are everywhere now. Uh, plenty of jacks. Uh, sea trout, to me, has sort of really tapered off. Uh, I, I, I'm not finding them in some of my spots in good numbers. We're catching one here and one there, but no concentration of sea trout. I'm hoping there's some further up north and maybe further south that uh, are in, in the St. John's River, but I'm just not seeing good numbers of sea trout. Now, the flounder, on the other hand, we're finally starting to see some good size. Had a couple this week that topped the 21 inch mark. Ooh, so that's good ones. Yeah, uh, that was nice. That was a, that's been a plus. But the redfish have just absolutely been off the scales, and we're ac- actually catching more oversized reds. Those reds we've talked about that are just over the slot, but not too big to become spawners and head out to the ocean yet. And these are the reds that are you know 28 to 33 inches. And today we actually got some up on the flat. And, man, I tell you what, Red, Rick, a red on a 30-inch red in two feet of water is hard to beat. <laughs> yes, it, it is. It is really hard to beat that's on a, light tackle. That's a North you know, Florida bonefish right there. You're not kidding. And it was spectacular. Guy, His first red fish he ever caught, this guy I had today, and got it up on the mud flat and – uh that's something I'm really uh, glad to see that. David, let me ask you a question, and, and thanks for a sure. great report. Let me tell you how much my attitude has changed, and everybody's attitude is changing. It's so funny. I uh, was flounder fishing, actually off one of my neighbor's docks yesterday evening, 
in shallow water, got a bite uh, on my jig, set the hook, and it was a beautiful trout, maybe 21 and a half, maybe 22 inches. David, I couldn't lift her up on the dock. I didn't have my net, so I jumped in. Now, the water was only to my waist. This was not a big deal, and you can insert your joke here. But it, I jumped in so I could wet my hands good and release her without harming her. Now, how much different is that than me 20 years ago? A whole lot. Quite a bit. Quite a bit, yes. And, and not just you, Rick. All of us. Everybody's getting that way. It's crazy. It's wonderful. Yeah. Yep. Hey, yeah. hey, I got a quick question for you before you go. Okay. What, what do you see as the number one threat to our fishery, your inshore fishery, your livelihood, over the next 10 to 15 years? Well, wow, that, that's, a, that's a really good one. And, and I've sort of been juggling this back and forth. Um, you know, anybody who tries to tell me, you know, uh, uh, global warming's not taking place, they, they don't live in nature. They probably live in an office or work in an office and then go home and stay inside their nice air-conditioned house. Uh, they're not out in nature where, they, where I'm actually seeing a lot of changes. Um, just this week alone, I can't tell you how many people reported catching snook north of the Highway 90 mark, uh, Beach Boulevard Highway 90, which is the old highway that goes right across the, the northern part of the state. Uh, I can tell you, I can count the snook I've caught north of that bridge on one hand. South of that bridge, I can't even tell you how many I've caught. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. just this week alone, a lot of guys reported 30-plus inch snook between Beach and Atlantic Boulevard. So, now, is, so is that I also a bad talked thing? About, no, it's not. So that's why I used to think maybe that was going to be the change. But now I think it's 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 just – Popular, I, I think the I'm going to have to say overfishing of inshore guys in that I don't know how to put this, but not so much that they're they're taking too much of the fish. I just think the fish are getting too much pressure. Okay, and not I don't think they're actually being overfished, especially the redfish. But the redfish have really just. They, they've, they've really changed a lot of their habits. And, and it surprises me, as good as the redfish have been, and I, I look back on days where I can remember coming up onto a mud flat and seeing at least 100 redfish. Yep, Rick, things are different. Yep. And that's happened. So, so you think it's, it's uh, more pressure on the fish, right? Yes, okay. yes. I, I, I mean, Perfect. for me personally, you know, Yep. And, and and that sort of sounds selfish in a way. I mean, it sounds like you know, but uh, you know, putting too much pressure on fish, I I, I really think it can do some harm, uh, you know, to to the to the fishery. Maybe like even now, you know, the trout are spawning now, you know, and and a lot of fish come in to spawn. Big reds come in to spawn, and people are just yanking them out of the water right and left. Yep. And, and that can't be. There's no way you can tell me, oh, there's nothing's going to happen there. That's okay. That's fine and dandy. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I just don't like messing with fish during their spawning season. I don't disagree. All right, David, we got to run. We appreciate it. We'll talk with you next All week. All right, Rick. Thank you, buddy. Tight lines. I'll be here, buddy. Okay, Captain David Boris. That means it's time for the East <laughs> Central, and that's where Captain Jimmy Ross is. Jimmy, how are you? I am doing fantastic, Rick. Hopefully, everybody out there in Florida sportsman land is doing the same. Well, we gotta and like the we, what, we gotta like the weather more, don't we? It's getting better. Yep, it's getting better. Yep. Tell me you how know, the fishing is. Those three months of March, I'm I'm are, are about <laughs> over about over with. Uh, I agree. Really good. The guys that got out on the first day of grouper season actually had some decent catches. Now, sandbar sharks were a problem, of course. Red snapper were another, uh, you know, problem. But there were quite a few really nice fish caught uh, and a lot of half fish caught. So if you take the grouper and a half that you got to bring home and an amberjack here and there, it was a pretty good overall weekend. Now, we've also got dolphin out there right now. The dolphin bite is showing 
to be pretty strong right along the western edge of the Gulf Stream. But some of the guys actually found they came back in, they were king mackerel fishing, and the king mackerel bite wasn't that good, so they decided they were going to try and run back out. They hit a couple of flying fish right around that 110 to 120 foot mark on their way back out to 180 to 200 feet. They decided, let's give it a try and actually found some fish inside where nobody had really been trolling for them. Everybody had been out there at the western edge of the stream. So once again, if you see the conditions that look right, don't overrun the bite. We have such a tendency to do that. We just want to go find that major edge, that major rip, that major temperature change. And if the bait's there and it looks good, give it a try, guys. Ah, that's a great, great advice, Jim. Great advice. Um I got to ask you a question. I and I can tell you from up here the dolphin bite's been very good too. You you and I've been at this game a long time. What's our what's our biggest threat over the next 10 15 years? Oh, government uh mismanagement. I think just in general. I don't I don't know if you could blanket that as in the entire over the entire fishery or uh you want to pick one specific species, but I mean we can pick specific species as you well know. Uh, red snapper as an as an example that are just not being managed properly and if we can get those guys to pay attention to what's actually going on in the water i think i think that's going to be the hardest struggle but they just refuse to it's like don't confuse me with the facts right yeah i have this i have this preset notion in my mind if we can just get government to react more quickly or be proactive which would even be a better option I think that's going to be the critical thing that we really all need to, to be concerned about because shutting down species that don't need to be shut down, opening up species that really shouldn't be opened or have as many as many potential harvested, uh, I think that there's just – it's so out of whack right now. They just – they really need to get in touch with what really is in the water. Jim, our, our problem is balance, and, and we have so overprotected, like you said, sandbar sharks – and we have so overprotected red snapper, and it's now happening at the detriment to the fishery. Yes, um, yes, it is. My dear friend Pat Price, God rest his soul, uh, said in his charter career he lost 21 sailfish to sharks. Uh, one was 20 years ago, one was 18 years ago, and the other 18 have been within the last year and a half. And yeah. and that's that's yeah. just that's just how it is. And and it we have we have you can't close things while you leave everything they compete against for food open it's just how it is right all right yeah. real quick anything going on inshore how's the lagoon the lagoon is still looking fairly good we're hitting that critical 80 degree water mark there's a lot of calorpa around there's not a lot of grass around if the calorpa will not decay and create huge you know nitrogen infusions right. into the lagoon i think we're going to be good um Redfish and trout have been fairly strong. Ladyfish have been pretty good. I had a fly trip today. Uh, we had jack Raval, ladyfish, redfish, speckled trout, and three catfish on fly. So there you go. Anybody looking, there you anybody go. Looking for, yeah, anybody looking for a hardhead catfish on fly? <laughs> this, now you're hitting your stride. Now you're. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm your guy. Let me. I can take you to them. <laughs> we found something you're good at. I'm proud of you. Thank you, Captain Jim. Please tell me we can check with you next week. I look forward to it, Rick. Thanks, Captain Jim Ross from the East Central Time. That means it's time to head south to Stewart. But before we do, let's grab a word from Shimano. You know, I'm not sure who first coined the phrase, the only thing saltwater can't destroy is saltwater. But you know what that meant to the engineers at Shimano? That sounded like a challenge. And their response is now on the shelves of Strike Zone Fishing. The new spinning reels are called Twin Power, and they feature the Infinity Drive, which means there's not a fish around they can't stop. That's because of their new heat sink drag, which means a hot wahoo or a tuna can run just as fast as they want, and you never have to worry about your drag heating up. Even better, the new Twin Powers are built to be the best reels ever at fighting saltwater intrusion. Listen, everybody's heard or experienced the problems with seeing the latest and greatest actually hitting the shelves of your local tackle shop. Well, I'm here to tell you that Shimano's partnership with Strike Zone means you can always count on finding the latest and greatest lining the shelves of both Strike Zone locations. Our thanks to Jim Ross for his East Central report. Now, let's head on down to the mayor of South Beach. I want to know what's happening off of Miami. Talk to me, Alan Sherman. 
Hey, Rick, how you doing? Excellent, buddy. How's fishing? Fishing is, uh, well, let me see. How can I put it? Uh, we've got dolphin. We've got kingfish. We've got sailfish, blackfin tunas. We've got bonitas, plenty of sharks, barracudas. We've got sea trout. And we got got... Uh, some big jack crevels and big schools of mullet. But when, if you take each species I just mentioned and put two words in front of it, that's what we really have. And those two words is A and few. Yeah, a few I was of afraid all you were going to say that. I yeah. was afraid that's what you were going to say. Well, <laughs> that's better than it has been. At least it looks like uh, we're getting into the weather to go catch them every day anyway, huh? Man, I wish that was true. We just keep getting hit by wind. Uh, I was out today, and it's still blowing. Uh, mostly stayed on the inshore side, but I didn't want to go offshore. because it, it. I mean, it's not bad for a, an offshore boat, a 30-foot or center console, drift party boat, uh, charter boat. Uh, very fishable, although I'm sure some of the customers weren't feeling great out there. But, you know, they're catching sailfish. They're getting sailfish on every charter and every trip, and they're live baiting them under – you know, fishing the baits under kites. It's mostly with goggle eyes, big thread fin herring, uh, Spanish sardines, pilchards. We've got some smoker-sized kingfish, which is very exciting because you expect them this time of the year. It's just you're not seeing schools of them, which is kind of, uh, you know, that worries me because we should have big numbers of them here, and we're not. There's just one here, one there, and uh, there's been some, some dolphin in the 20 to 40-pound range, but it's a singular fish. Mm -hmm. They're not schooled up. They're just passing through. Uh, there's frigate birds on them, and uh, the guys are chasing the frigate birds down when they can. You know, if you're in a 25-footer a trying to chase a frigate bird that's got a dolphin underneath it, you're going to get beat up pretty bad trying to get to that fish. So a lot of the guys are just hoping when one of these frigates flies overhead with a fish under it, and they, and they cast a bait to it, a pitch bait. Uh, but there, you know, there's fish to be caught and there's some quality fish. It's just, you know, there's not big numbers of them and hopefully, you know, we'll see them in the near future, although it is getting closer to, to the summer. So, um, you know, I, we didn't really have much of a spring run. You know, you expect those big dolphin to come in better numbers starting in, in, you know, late March, April, big bluefish sometimes show up those two months. We didn't see them. Uh, very few Spanish mackerel past our coast going south or going north. And, and and that worries me quite a bit because that's a fish I like to fish for. Don't well, know what happened to them this year. If it makes you feel any better, um, the Spanish mackerel have been very thick up here. Well, and, uh, and fortunately, we're off to one of the best dolphin seasons I've seen in eight or nine years anyway. So um, Oh, that's great to hear. I, I took, uh, took the boat last uh, Tuesday. Um, found a big old boiling edge, thank you, Lord, in uh, 700 feet of water. And, and Alan, we trolled on it 90 minutes. And I said, don't don't put him back out. I said, that, that's, really? it. that's all That's all we're taking out of here. Well, you you could have picked your number. You only take five per person right now. Yeah, and, uh, have, well, well, I know, but I mean, I could have put 25 in the boat, and I don't, I'm not taking 25. That's not, I got you. That's not how and, we fish and, anymore. But, uh, and what kind of what kind of size? Uh, twelve to eighteens for the most part. Um, we didn't great fish. we didn't have any big fish, but for the boats that stayed on the rip all day, almost all of them were graced with a fish over twenty five. So there were some. I got to ask you. There, there were some. Big how fish. far offshore, Rick? Is uh, that seven hundred feet from my dock? Seventy two miles. <laughs> That's a long way, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah. In a 24 foot bay boat, it is. Yeah, yeah, well, in a 27 foot center console, it ain't no day at the beach. Alan, no, I guess it isn't. Alan, I got a quick question for you, and, and, and I hate to put you on the spot, but I got to have kind of a quick answer on it. Over the next 10, 15 years, what do you see as our biggest threat to our fishery? Uh, you know, that's a, a tough question to come up with a biggest threat because it's easy to say there are lots of big threats that we have to deal with in the next 10, 15 years. But if I have to pinpoint one, usually I'll go with water quality. And I really think water quality is one of the number one issues that I we agree. have to address. But I was thinking about this, and now I have another thought, and that would be to preserve what we have. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't have any of what we have today in 10 or 15 years, 
if we figure it out in 15 years, it'll be too late. We can't get it back if we lose it, can we? That's right. Yep, I agree with you 100%. I surely do. Well, Cap, that's an excellent report. I agree. I appreciate it so much. I agree with your thoughts on our challenges that, uh, that we face. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges is 1,600 people a day move to Florida. And that's, <laughs> we got to have a lot of room for a lot of boats, and everybody's yeah. going to have to be a little bit, is going to have to be happy with a little bit less than what we've been taking home in the in the past. So um, I agree. You and I were fortunately here for the glory days. Now let's make the days good for our kids and grandkids. Thank you, there Cap. You we appreciate it so much. Talk to you. Captain Alan Sherman from Miami. You know what Yamaha Outboards love? The genuine formula and consistency of Yamalu Marine Engine Oils. Blood, 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 blood. Outboards are subjected to punishing conditions like high loads, salt, and humidity, a mix that automotive oils can't handle. Yamalu full synthetic and marine performance formulas are certified to protect against friction and corrosion for reliable performance every time. Ah. Find Yamalu Marine Oils at your nearest Yamaha Outboard dealer. Locate them at yamahaoutboards.com backslash dealers. Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Hey, Raj, you know, being consistent is a mark of a quality product. If you've been Florida's number one chum for over 10 years, there's got to be a reason. For 10 years, Tournament Master Chum has lived up to his name. That's why more tournament pros insist on Tournament Master than any other chum. It's the only chum with Menhaden milk mixed right in. That means it gets the scent out faster and deeper than any other brand of chum. It comes in a grind size for every species from kingfish to catch and bait. Your fishing time is way too precious to use second-rate chum. Bring the action to you by insisting on Tournament Master Chum. It's worth every penny. When you're ready for the finest in custom-made flat spay or inshore-offshore hybrids, you are ready to meet the Young family in Inglis, Florida. For over 21 years, the Young family has built custom boats one at a time for every type of fishing. Nothing can sneak up on a flat quite like the Gulf Shore Flats boats, and I've never fished a better hybrid than the Young 24s and 27s. Rob Young is a naval architect who takes tremendous pride in each and every build for each and every customer that wants their boat custom-built exactly the way they want want it. Is it time for you to move up? Are you ready to own the finest boat built? Then you need to visit the Young Boat Facility in Inglis, Florida, or check them out online at youngboats.com. Our thanks to Alan Sherman for a great Miami report. Now, let's cut over to the Southwest Coast and check in with Snook Stamp Charters and Captain Greg Stamper. Greg, how are you? I'm doing very well. It's about to pour here. And there's going to be some lightning, Rick. Oh, all right. We'll we'll get you out of there in a hurry. Tell me how your uh, fishing's been. All right. Overall, this entire week was outstanding. You know, the wind laying down, the water cleaning up has really helped out the bite, and we did very well this week. You know, Rick, I got to ask you a question too. By the way, you know how you go through those time frames? You're out there for many hours every day, and you know you see that magic hour where everything starts to happen. Oh yeah. Well. That's what's happening right now. The morning bite in the first hour, maybe two, early, is really good. Then there's this big lull, and then in the afternoon around noon one, everything gets on fire again, and they're eating. So that's kind of been the story of my entire week. I tell you what, I have always said, Captain Greg Stamper, give me the first two hours of daylight and the last two, and I'll give you the rest of the day. <laughs> Well, today is a good example. We started early. Rick, we caught three or four really nice pompano, uh, three, four pounders. Ooh, good fish. That is good. And then we said, all right, let's go to the back and see what the current is doing. This is my morning trip. And we went in the back. It took us an hour and a half to catch two trout that were sizable that we could keep. And then the last 15 minutes of my trip, we, we limited it out. So I was like, all right. Then we went out with my afternoon client, and guess what happened? We limited it out on trout in about 15, 20 minutes, and then we went and caught redfish and stuff. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, it sounds very familiar. And as we get more into the summertime, Greg, it seems to get more and more that way. Once once we get into June, second half of June and July, I'm off the water by 8.30 in the morning, and or else I'm starting on the water at 5.30 in the evening. And that's, that's just – that's when it happens for me, I tell you what. Uh, hey, let me ask you a question. Yeah. You've been at this game forever. You've caught everything that swims. What fish do you still dream of catching that you've never caught? Oh, my goodness. This is an easy one. I, I talk about this with even my clients. 
So I have been on boats when they've been caught. I have actually cleaned those fish myself because the people caught them and I was cleaning them. And then I've even gone home and I've eaten it. But you know what I've never caught, Rick, that I cannot believe I haven't okay, got Okay, okay. I don't do offshore much, but an African pompano. Oh, how about that? I was going to guess broadbill swordfish, but I tell you what, African pompano is a great fish now. You know what's funny, though? I've seen them. They've come up and almost taken my bait. And it seems like they're just like, you know what, look, Sam, this is going to be the one thing you're never going to get. So hey, hey Stamp, we, we ain't messing with you, Stamp. You're just going about your business. <laughs> I That's like it. it. That's truly it. Greg, thanks for a great report, and I can't wait to hear about the African pompano you catch this week, next week. All right, we're getting ready to get poured on. Tight line. Go get them. Bye-bye. Captain Greg Stamper from Snook Stamp Charters. All right, it's time for West Central, but before we do that, let's get a word from the Castaway Hat Company. You know, I'll bet you don't even remember the day that all us cool kids would rub baby oil mixed with iodine to help us get even darker in the summertime. Being burnt was cool, and even if you weren't a surfing legend, you sure looked the part. Oh, if a lot of us paid the price for our vanity, we never knew the skin problems and health damage that awaited us as adults. Today's fishermen have the option of being so much healthier in the sun than we ever thought of, thanks in no small part to Castaway Hat Company, who not only provides our podcasters with Castaway straw hats, but they make the coolest prints on the underside of the brims you ever saw. You may think your bimini top or t-top blocks the sun, but as an awful lot of us OGs can tell you, you can't have enough protection from sun damage. Do what we do. Put on the sunblock and put on your castaway hat. You'll look the part of today's best anglers, and you'll even be helping the environment. For each castaway hat sold, the castaway company will pay to have one pound of trash removed from our waterways. The burning Florida sun won't be roasting your skin, and believe me, when you age a few years, you'll thank us old guys that have spent a lifetime on the water. So go to castawayhatco.com and get your best sun protection today. The Castaway Hat Company, the hat that's helping us save our oceans. Our thanks to Greg Stamper for a great Southwest report. That means it's West Central time and time to check in with Ray Mark. And Raymond, how are you? It's Monday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. But, but, Ray, the wind's not blowing as hard as it was. That's a good thing. No, it's not. And that's an excellent thing. Uh, things are starting to settle down a little bit, and uh, fish are starting to chew a little bit. Uh, depending on what you're fishing for, where you're fishing. But uh, I'll tell you one thing that I'm hearing everywhere is that mangrove snapper are mm. just chewing the bottom out of the boat. Yeah, and uh, we're, hearing the same thing. we're hearing the same thing over here on the northeast section, Ray, and it's it's the 1st of May. I can't believe how many mangrove snapper we're seeing. I know, and I mean, for, uh, from some of the pictures I've seen with the sizes of some of these fish, makes me think that they're, they're catching them out on the middle ground because they're huge. <laughs> I mean, some of these things are coming in, they're 8, 10 pounds. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's not your typical Tampa Bay fish, mind you, but uh, some of these guys that I'm talking to aren't aren't going out more than about, oh, 80 to 100 feet of water. So you're looking around 25, 30 miles. Mm -hmm. um, but still, I mean, if, if you don't have the boat to do something like that and you still want to catch some mangoes that are really good eating, there's plenty of them in Tampa Bay right now. Gotcha. There's lots of hard bottom. There's small uh, uh, artificial reefs out there all over the place. And, in fact, um, the artificial reefs that are on either side of the Sunshine Skyway fishing piers are excellent, and they are loaded with them. Um, average size there are running from anywhere from one to three pounds. Oh, that's good but fish. Yeah. But, the, hey, those are great fish. <laughs> yeah. um, this last weekend, they ran the King of the Beach tournament out uh, out in the gulf here and the winning fish was just shy of 39 pounds and is a repeat a repeat uh winner from uh the la uh, last king of the beach that we had how about that and, the same uh, guy went back to back yep wow who yes, was well, it he, do you know uh he yeah i yeah i do know but you had to ask <laughs> if I would I'd have written his name down and be like, yeah, um, um, senior moment. Oh, it, it'll, it'll come to 
soon as I get off the phone. Yep. Senior moment. <laughs> yep. Yep. But, um, it, you know, the guys are, they're, uh, they're getting some pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty good looking Macs too coming in, uh, ranging anywhere from two to five pounds. So, uh, some of them actually, the, the upper limits are, are pushing six, but those are few and far between. But limits of, of mackerel, Spanish mackerel, seem to be uh, pretty common. Uh, guys are still pulling up some uh, uh, nice red grouper. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's uh, a weird month. Uh, everybody seems to be shifting towards tarpon right now. And it, it's a little early yet, but, I mean, it's not. Because I, I'm sitting there, and, and tarpon were showing up in February this year and not March and March. Usually they show up for about a week or two and then disappear for a few weeks and then suddenly come back. But I think those fish were, um, ones coming out of the back country and rivers and creeks and things. So yep. I think everything's kind of shaping up, but it's shaping up a little early. Yep. Yep. That's okay. We'll handle it. We'll handle it. Just give us a calm ocean and calm inshore waters. We'll be okay. Hey, Ray, let me ask you a question. Many years as sure. you've been, many years as you've been doing this, what fish do you still dream of catching you haven't caught yet? Well, I honestly can't say I've really dreamed about it, but, you know, I've caught most of the fish that I wanted to catch, but there's one fish that I, actually there's a couple of fish, a clown knife fish, which is uh, kind of an exotic. Right. Uh, they've, they've got some down in South Florida. Uh, I got some buddies that fish for them and, and do uh, an excellent job catching some monsters. Um, and the other would be a barramundi. <clears throat> now we, we have some barramundi somewhere in the center portion of the state, uh, where they raise them. And, uh, it's, it's not something that I, I think everybody can go in and do. I don't know if you just have to know somebody or something, but, but they're kind of like our snook, right. but they're, they're, they're basically from foreign country. I don't remember if it's Brazil or something like that, but they fight a lot like a snook. They, uh, I understand they're good eating. I've never eaten one. I don't know anybody has, but I've heard. Um, but they have some hellacious teeth on them too. So, huh. well, you got me there. I haven't caught either one of those. Thank you, Raymond. Please tell me we can talk to you next week. Only if you promise to give me a wahoo. Oh, now that I can probably that I can probably arrange. But, uh, You're the man. I, Come on down a, fishing and bring it with you. I've seen a few <laughs> Wahoo. Thank you, Raymond. All right, buddy. Bye. Captain Ray Markham from West Central. Now, before we head up into the panhandle, let's get a word from DOA. I recently had a chance to stop by DOA World Headquarters in Stewart, Florida, and I was not the least bit surprised to see company founder Mark Nichols hard at work on a new fish catching invention. What was shocking to me was he was working on the original DOA shrimp, the same shrimp he patented in 1985, the stealthiest bait ever made, the only bait that lands so subtly that spooky fish will never hear it, was getting Mark's full attention. What are you doing, was the obvious question. Mark looked at me funny. I've never stopped working on the shrimp, he said. It's got to catch more fish every year, so I've got to make each batch better than the last. I've now got all the production here in-house, and that means today three- and four-inch shrimp are consistently the best we've ever built. You know what? I get it now. The DOA shrimp that fooled a million fish back in 1985 has had to keep up with the times to keep making your fishing better. Hey, the fish are spooky. It's 2022, and they see baits all day long, so keep up with the times. The 2022 version of the DOA shrimp is the stealthiest, most lifelike, deadliest bait you can throw. Now, it is time to go to Homosassa, and we don't get the word from just anybody in Homosassa. We check in with the mayor himself. Mr. Mayor, how are you? Doing good. We got a little, you know, sun shower. Beautiful. It's keeping our flowers real nice and watered here in Homosassa, but, you know, and the fish are happy, so everything's good here in downtown Homosassa. Outstanding. Outstanding. Boy, it seems to me like our weather is finally calming down. Have the fish picked up in the last week or so? It has. You know, and I, I attribute a lot to our new moon that we just got off of. And the and the just I just like a new moon tide better. And, you know, before that, we had the full moon and hard east winds, and it was just heinous. But right now, everything inshore, 
is right on par, catching a lot of nice trout. And catch them down toward Chazawiska, toward uh, any of the bars along what we call the pole line, which is the boundary stakes for the Chazawiska National Wildlife Refuge. And I'm sure up toward Lake Horseshoe and, and that area towards Stenahatchee, those sandy potholes and things like that, about three to four foot of water is probably working just as well. Red fishing on the western points has been very good. Look for mullet. Now, snook season is closed. Doesn't mean you can have you know can't have fun catching a couple and things like that, and uh, catching those on the outside edges as well. Use some DOA glow jerk baits, or you could use live pinfish shrimp. Or if you're lucky enough to get a thread fin, they'll eat those also. Um, you said the wind's been heinous. Well, that was that was about uh, last the week before last. So I- right now our. Our winds are beautiful. We're getting them out of the southwest about five to ten, which is our beautiful wind here on the Big Bend. Yeah, I, I don't. I got ten bucks that says you can't spell heinous. <laughs> oh yeah, it's F D W E R. That's right. I'm sorry, it? Rick. You call me. I used a big <laughs> word. <laughs> I did catch you. Hey, I got a question for you. Yeah, right, ma'am. You've been doing this all your life. You are fourth yes, generation. Sir. What fish do you dream of catching you've still never caught? All right. Now, these are – can I talk about freshwater fish? Oh, please do. All right. Now, these are – I've ate them before in walleye, and I've ate northern pike. I'm, I, but my three that I would want one day before I get to go to the great, you know, fishing grounds in the sky, I want to catch a walleye, a northern pike, and a muskie. If I can catch those three, there's something I can put in my belt. You know, I here in our home state, I want to you know catch a bonefish and and all that sort of thing, and I can do that. So that's all within grass. But uh, getting up there to the northern part, that's just something I've always wanted to do. I I don't blame you a bit. I have caught bonefish, but I've never caught them on the flat, and that's one for me that I really want to do. I want to catch a big bonefish on a fly rod in eight inches of water someday. I'd, I'd, I'd love to do that. Yep. Oh, and, um, you mentioned that great fishing ground in the sky. Yes. When you get there and you see a 35 Cabo backing down real hard, like he's trying to keep <laughs> up with a hot blue Marlin, you can go, right. Oh, right. Rick's already here. <laughs> it's Rick to beat me to the beat me to the punch, and you know as I get on that, maybe that, you know I I can I can tag that fish for you. We can pet him, and then we'll take that cabo right on up to like the Flambeau River or to one of the Great Lakes, and then I can get my end on. I'm with you. I'm with you, Cap. We'll be there together. Thank you, William. We'll see you next week. Talk to you next week, Captain William Tony. Our okay. thanks to William Tony for all the news from the Big Bend. That means it's Northwest time, and that's Kevin Lanier territory. Kevin, how we doing? I'm doing great, Captain Rick. I'm still trying to count the Red Snapper Day since we talked last time. Shut up. Nobody asks you. <laughs> Nobody cares what you think. <laughs> Golly. It's, yes, it's, you do, because you call me every week. You care. <laughs> I know. I do care. It's true. I do. You get 79 they're trying to decide whether or not they're going to give us our three. Uh, it's, it's well, just, it's I'm crazy. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but it's been a good day. It but, was a good day. Today. All right, let me ask you a, a, a serious question along those lines. Okay. Can you dump your bait overboard in, say, 80, 90, 100 feet of water and have them come up to the surface? Uh, this time of year, yes. Once we get into the warmer summer months, no. Okay. I mean, it would be, you know, almost a guarantee now. But uh, once we get into July and August, no. They're not the, the, the reason I ask you is I'm trying to determine who has more, us, this side, or you. It's hard for me to imagine any place having more red snapper than Northeast Florida does. But I guess it's I guess it's possible. I just uh, there's quite a disparity in how much we get to fish. But give me the report. Tell me what's happening. Well, Amberjack turned on May 1st, and uh, they are all over the place. Um, today we were out and uh, just uh, motoring up on a reef and looked down, and there were Amberjack all over the place. Good. Uh, Good deal. So that was great. Um, red snappers still, uh, you can't get away from them to get anything else. Uh, beeliner fishing has been great. Um, you know, we've just, right now the fishing, um, 
you know, we were talking about, you know, you know, why can't we keep red snapper right now instead of fishing on them on the spawn? But we'll have that conversation another day. Uh, <laughs> but we are uh, fishing is great right now. Flounder is on fire here. Oh, good. Uh, the guys that are fishing from the, uh, the beach are getting uh, quite a bit of pompano. Um, I've seen a handful of nice flounder come across uh, the last couple of days. Watch the guy catch one in the canal today as we're heading out. So um, fishing's great over here right now. Good deal. Good deal. Hey, let me ask you a question before you go. I, okay. What what fish do you still dream of fi- catching that you've never caught? I still want to catch a yellowfin tuna 100 pounds. Ah, I got you on that one. But, uh, one. Yeah, I haven't done that one, and I still don't have a marlin to my name. So <coughs> 22. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. That's How many out. days of red snapper fishing we got? Shut no, up. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> wants to hear that. Nobody wants to hear that. And I'm, honesty compels me to tell you that the that the 110 pound yellowfin bit down on a uh, Yozuri hydromag and got it lodged sideways in his mouth, and he couldn't he couldn't go anywhere. You understand what I'm saying? If he oh, had, yeah. if yeah. he had taken off on a blistering run, he'd have drowned himself. So. We, we brought the fish up to the boat. I'd been gaffing 35 and 40 pound yellowfin. I had the, the mate up on the bridge and I've been sticking them all morning. That thing came up to the boat and I went, uh, Denny, uh, come on down here a minute. <laughs> I knew that fish was green and I knew I didn't want to stick it, but we, we got it. So, Hey cap, as always, we appreciate the heck out of it. Please tell me we can check with you next week. Hey, we'll be back next week with bells on. Right, now, how many days of red snapper season do you get? Uh, 79. That's what I thought. Talk to you later, yep. bud. Our thanks to Kevin Lanier for a great Northwest Florida report. Now we can't get out of Florida till we go through the panhandle. That's where Tyler Massey is large and in charge. Cap, how are you? I'm doing good, Rick. How are you? Good, good. Tell me about your fishing. So, yeah, fishing's been, you know, picking up. We're, we're moving away from our, our springtime pattern where it's, you know, hit or miss and whatnot and, and stuff starting to come alive. Um, Inshore fishing has been pretty good. Um, you know, our, our red fish and trout moving onto the grass flat. Um, so that, that makes them a little easier to target and catch. Um, we got a lot of area where just open grass and you can float a shrimp or, or throw a, a mirror lure and, and pick off those trout. Um, it, it's, uh, it's just now been getting good the last few days, really. Um, Tyler, red fish. Was, yep, Tyler, is this, is this your best time of year for, for daytime trout? Yeah, I, I think it is. Um, you know, in the next couple of weeks, it's, it's probably probably going to be the best. Um, you know, once we get into June, um, it's still pretty good, but not as good as it is going to be um, in the month of May. So May is a really good month just for any kind of inshore fishing in general. Gotcha. Okay. Anything out in the ocean yet? Yeah, we've been catching. Uh, um, bottom fishing's been great. Um, catching a lot of vermilion snappers. Amberjack just opened up on 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 May first, so we've been we've been targeting those. Um, the, the bigger wrecks haven't been, been holding the jacks, the, uh, big artificial structures. So, um, fish a, a free line, hardtail blue runner. Um, you call it's been the best bet, but, uh, other baits is, um, ruby red lips, uh, you know, grunts, we catch them offshore. Been working pretty good. Um, any kind of bigger live bait's going to work good for those. Gotcha. Now, um, when does your red snapper season open? So for for me on the federal char- federally permitted charter boats can be on June the first. Okay. Um, for the recreational anglers in our state water charter boats, it's going to be June seventeenth. I see. So you guys get uh, get a sixteen day head start on the on the uh, uh, recreational boats. So. Huh? Yep, we we do, and uh, and you know it's, it makes it a little easier for us on the charter boats for sure. Not no competition. Yeah, yeah, I would say it would. I would sure say it would. <laughs> now, will your grouper be open then? When do your gag grouper open back up? Yep, gag grouper opens on June first, and we've been we've been catching some nice grouper. Um, you know, yesterday we caught a a real nice one uh, as a jack by catch. You know, we're only in the forty pound range, so Ooh. there's definitely a few few groupers around, and uh, you know, it, it's it's definitely uh, nice to be able to keep them instead of turning them loose. Now, are are they open? They're closed now, right? Yeah, they'll open on June first as well. All right, let me teach me something, Tyler. I've never been able to release a grouper that big. Uh, just trying to get them to go back down has been 
has been such a job. Are you using descending devices, or or did that group yeah, go, to, go back down by himself? Uh, no, definitely always try to vent them. Um, the descending devices seem to work really well. Um, you know, also a lot of people like to get, you know, good pictures and whatnot of these big groupers out of season. Um, the best thing to do is get them back in the water, you know, as quickly as possible. Oh, yeah. Um, the, the one I, the one I caught yesterday was super frisky. Um, he was not exploded. You know, his stomach wasn't out of his mouth when I caught him. Good. And he, you know, jumped out of my hands and, and kicked back into the water strong. Um, Wonderful. you know, just with any fish, uh, as quick as you can. Descending devices, I think, do work. Um, especially with, you know, big snappers and groupers. Um, sometimes there's just nothing you can do about it, but the descending devices they have with the, you know, the quick release, um, you know, you go down there and you snatch on it and it, it releases it. Mm-hmm. it seems to work really well. Good deal. Cap, we appreciate it as always. Please tell me we can check with you next week. I'll be here, Rick. We'll see you. All right. Captain Tyler Massey from Destin. And that wraps up our trip around the state for tonight. Gosh, it's been a lot of fun. There's been a lot of fish caught. Almost everybody reported better mahi fishing than we've seen. Jim Ross talking about catching them in 100 feet of water back when they had come back in shore. Um, I know they've been doing very well in the Stewart area. John Earhart's on an evening charter. We couldn't get him, but he sent me pictures of a monster he caught on his morning charter today. Alan Sherman said they weren't as good in South Florida as they have been, but all up and down the East Coast, it seems to be the start of a very good mahi season. Everybody's catching mangrove snapper. They're in Jacksonville. They're on the West Coast. They're everywhere. They've obviously had very good spawns, and their numbers seem to be up. It was interesting to hear the guys talk about our major threats over the next years, too. Water quality was Alan Sherman's biggest concern. A lot of guys, myself included, feel like that the government has thrown the ocean out of balance by closing some fish entirely to harvest sandbar sharks and red snapper come to mind right away they seem to be taking over areas and causing problems for other fisheries but hey it's been a fun trip there's been a lot of good uh reports put out there a lot of good fish being caught we're in the springtime now and i can't wait for the next month or so to come this week's florida sportsman action spotter was brought to you by yamaha reliability starts here by shimano bringing people and nature together by tournament master chum Oh, it's the best chum on earth, all right. By Nassara Paradise Reynolds, your dream vacation. By DOA Lures, the unfair advantage. By Young Boats, the finest in flat spay and offshore hybrids. And by the Castaway Hat Company, the hat that's helping save our seas. Until next week, for Florida Sportsman Action Spotter, I'm Captain Rick Riles, and I'll see you on the rip.